summer is the season of fruits and vegetables, and summer is in full swing here in Happy Valley. When it comes to fruit, I like it incorporated into my meal as much as I like it in my dessert. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make a spinach, gorgonzola, and grilled pear salad, and I'm serving it with a very special pan-seared Iberico pork sucreto. Let's get started. In my opinion, if fruit is being served in my salad, I want it incorporated into my salad dressing too. And pears are no exception. Pear infused balsamic vinegar and pear nectar are really easy to find in the grocery store and I found a way to make a great salad dressing with them. I'm going to start by putting six tablespoons of pear infused balsamic vinegar in a two cup measuring container. And I like to use these containers because they have a nice little screw on lid that I can just shake the dressing in the container and when it's all put together. I'm going to put six tablespoons of lemon infused balsamic, uh, not balsamic, lemon infused olive oil in with my balsamic vinegar. This is a really neat little gadget. It's a two and a one tablespoon measure. It's one of my most used utensils in my kitchen. I'm using walnut oil. If you don't have walnut oil, you can skip it, but this is what's gonna give it a really little nutty undertone to the salad dressing. So I'm going with three tablespoons of olive oil. I've got six tablespoons of honey. I like to use honey instead of sugar because it just dissolves instantly. All of that. In there. I've got a teaspoon and a half of freshly ground black peppercorn blend, and I've got about a half teaspoon of sea salt. A nice round tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Just a spatula to get that off. And enough of pear nectar to total a cup and a half. I'm just going to put it on this. I'm going to give it a good shake. And it's time to get our pears ready for the grill. When it comes to pears that you're gonna use for cooking and baking, nothing beats the Bosque. And there's a couple of things you need to know about all pears in general. Pears are always picked before they're ripe because they ripen better after they've been picked. Pears ripen from the inside out, which kind of makes it tough to tell when they're ripe. Usually with fruit, if you grip it and it's kind of a little bit givey towards the center, that means it's ripe. In the case of a pear, that means it's overripe. To tell if the pear is perfectly ripe, it's gonna to yield to a little bit of pressure right up around the neck. I have one Bosque pear here. It's going to be enough to make two, three really good salads. I'm just gonna slice a little bit off the base. And then I'm just gonna eyeball this and I'm gonna cut it into six or eight one quarter inch discs, which is a really different way to cut pears. A lot of people like to uh, core them and put them into slices, but I think this is a really pretty way to do them. Well, this pear is going to give us, okay, seven discs today. I'm using just a little around cookie cutter, the big one. I'm going to use to take the, uh, the center, the star center, that is your seeds of the pear. The bigger ones have star centers, so you're just going to want to crunch down on those to remove them. And when you get to the outer edges, which if you've ever sliced and cored a pear, you know it gets thinner, you can just use a thinner one and you can make some smaller indentations in the pear. 
comes up there. Pull that one out. Last one coming up. And now, I'm just going to brush the tops of these with some of that lemon infused olive oil. Nice and quick, nothing. This is also going to help them from turning brown as well, but there's nothing you can really do about that. Now, we're just going to move over to the stove and I'm going to heat up my grill pan and I'm going to grill these. Grilling pears couldn't be easier and you can do the same thing with peaches and apples. And you can do it outside on your gas grill if you want to too. I've preheated my grill pan over medium high heat and I'm putting my pears on it boiled side down. You can hear they're starting to sizzle. And I'm just going to quickly dab the tops or the new tops with more of our lemon infused EVOO. And you just want to dab because once you put them on the grill pan, you're really looking for those pretty marks. And if you start sliding your pears around and turning them before they're golden brown, you're just not going to get the pretty marks. You're just going to get a bunch of brown spots where you don't want them. So don't, don't move your pears. And you're just going to let them grill about, about three minutes per side. I'm just using a little three minute timer to time it. And we'll just watch these really carefully until it's time to flip them over. It's actually taken about four minutes to get these really golden brown on one side, so I've just flipped them all over and I'm going to let them go again. And the second side is probably only going to take three minutes because the second side always cooks faster than the first side. Iberico pork comes from the Iberico breed of the black-footed pig, and it's raised almost exclusively in Spain. Now these pigs, they roam freely in pastures and oak groves, and they eat all natural grasses, herbs, but more importantly, they eat acorns, which are really high in oleic acid, the same acid that's found in olive oil, which makes this marbled, rosy, melt-in-your-mouth tender cut of meat actually really high in healthy, monounsaturated fats. Yes, Iberico pork's a little hard to find. I buy mine on the internet. If you don't really want to, you know, take the time to do that, just substitute some lightly pounded pork cutlets. They'll taste just great. But I really do hope you'll take a moment to give this a try. This piece of Iberico pork, which resembles a skirt steak, is actually a pork skirt steak, and I've just cut it down the center to form two pieces. I've melted four tablespoons of butter into four tablespoons of olive oil and seasoned the top of both pieces of pork with salt and pepper. And I'm putting them in seasoned side down. And both, both sides of this are going to cook really fast, like one to two minutes per side. I'm just going to quickly season the second sides. The worst mistake you can make is overcooking this pork. It is so highly marbled, it is going to cook up really fast. This pork is lightly brown. It's only cooked for about a minute and a half, but it is ready to turn over. That's how quickly, it's just kind of like a skirt steak, this cooks. Oh, look at that, it is beautiful. Oh, you can just smell how wonderful this is. I wish you could. It's about another minute and a half on the second side, and these are ready to come out. And let me tell you, whoever coined the phrase pork fat rules, it applies 100% to this cut of meat. I've sliced my big piece of pork into two pieces, and now I am just taking my sharp chef's knife and I 
Look at how beautiful this is. This is one of the most exquisite pieces of meat you are ever going to taste. I'm slicing it on a 30 degree angle. It slices beautifully, flavorful, crispy. Oh, amazing. This is the salad I like to assemble rather than toss. A bed of baby spinach, some of that pan-seared Iberico pork sucreto, shaved red onion, gorgonzola cheese crumbles, toasted walnuts, and of course, some of my pear-infused vinaigrette. A little of this goes a long way. For these and all of my recipes, just go to my website.